Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm excited to have the opportunity to have a look at this Creality K1 3D printer. Anyone who's watched this channel for really any amount of time knows that 3D printing is a big part of just about any project I showcase. It's a fantastic tool for bringing plastic model car kits to life or personalizing already great looking ready to run RC models. This Creality K1 promises some impressive features, perhaps most notably high speed 3D printing. In general, 3D printing is a pretty slow process with many parts taking hours or in some cases even days to be completed. But with an advertised max speed of 600 millimeters per second and a sensor to counteract ghosting and ringing, this printer will be able to create parts faster than any other one in my current fleet. This is among many other features such as a flexible removable build plate, full enclosure and automatic leveling. I'm looking forward to putting this printer to the test, so let's dive right in. While I've been 3D printing for years now and certainly have plenty of experience on a variety of printers, I don't really keep up on the latest in the world of hobby or lower cost consumer grade machines. I'll be sharing my experience with this Creality K1 from the perspective of a hobbyist or maker wanting to produce typical FDM parts at home, but if you're looking for a direct comparison to other printers on the market in a similar price range, or want a more detailed look at the construction components and software of this K1, I recommend checking out some additional videos here on YouTube from fellow creators that focus solely on 3D printers after watching this video. They'll be able to provide side-by-side -side comparisons and far more details than what I can in this video. This printer was sent to me for review, but as always, all of my opinions are my own, and I will be sharing my experience, both positive and negative. But with that out of the way, let's get this printer unboxed and have a look at what's inside. I'm happy to see that this printer came packed very well. Nice and secure, and nothing showed up damaged. This printer comes fully assembled with just a few small items such as the front control screen and rear spool holder needing to be installed. A variety of tools, a flash drive, and some filament are included along with a nice quick start manual which you'll want to refer to when setting up your K1. Don't forget to set the correct voltage and remove these three screws holding the build plate in place. I powered on the machine for the first time and loaded up the included white Hyper PLA filament, which is advertised as being better for high speed printing. The printer will guide you through the setup process and begin a self inspection. During the self inspection, the printer will shake around and make quite a bit of noise, but it's normal so no need to worry. As with any piece of tech like this, I like to make sure it's up to date and there were a few updates at the time of filming for this K1 right out of the box which I went ahead and installed. I like this screen on the front of the K1. You can do a number of simple but useful tasks such as moving the build plate, heating the extruder, and selecting the file you'd like to print. One thing that doesn't seem to be an option from this screen is adjusting settings such as the flow rate or speed while the model is being printed, something I'm used to seeing on a number of other printers I have, but maybe it's not as common of a feature as I thought. This printer overall feels solid and well made. There's a lot of features that you would probably expect from a modern 3D printer in this price range, such as out of filament detection, power loss recovery, automatic bed leveling, and there's even a sensor meant to counteract the movement of the printer at high speeds, reducing the amount of ringing and ghosting seen on the finished parts. A camera can be hooked up for remotely monitoring your printer, however it will need to be purchased separately. The build volume is 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters, with a larger version of the K1 also being available. A 0.4 millimeter nozzle comes installed on this printer. Larger 0.6 and 0.8 millimeter nozzles are also available, but sold separately. It seems like there is plenty of cooling, though this machine certainly makes some noise. Just like with a lot of FDM printers, it's probably best suited for a workshop, but I suppose it's fine in a bedroom as well, if you don't mind a bit of noise. This does have a direct drive extruder. I'm not sure if it was mentioned in the quick start guide, but there is a little switch up top that locks and unlocks the filament. Probably self-explanatory, but make sure you flip that switch when necessary when changing out the filament. So far, the only real issue I've encountered as far as the design of the printer goes was when I ran out of filament on a print, the printer detected as such, but couldn't fully retract the filament far enough for me to pull it out from the back. I ended up needing to remove the tube up by the extruder, pulled out the filament, then fed in some new filament and continued the print. 
a minor inconvenience, but I wish it was a little easier to deal with. Like with most printers in this price range on the market now, it can be connected to your Wi-Fi and you can control it via your smartphone or computer. From these devices, you can monitor your printer or multiple printers if you have more than one and upload files to be printed. I downloaded the current version of the software from Creality onto my PC. I'm not much of a smartphone user, so I'm not sure how well the software works there, but on my PC, everything connected and worked just fine. I found the included slicing software from Creality could be a little glitchy at times, and not always the best when it comes to things such as adding supports automatically or laying out many parts. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the UI either, but I did use it to slice every single print that you'll see in this video, and it will certainly get the job done. Overall, a nice first impression, so let's get printing. I smeared some glue onto the build plate and 3D printed one of the pre-installed G-code files, which is a model of the popular 3D Benchy. It turned out looking great. A little bit of stringing and maybe a few minor imperfections here and there if you really wanted to nitpick, but overall it looks good to me, especially considering the speed it was printed at. Next I printed this articulating cat model that was also included with the machine. Once again, the finished part looks great. Next, I did a 600 mm per second speed test with great results once again, using the included Hyper PLA filament. Doing the same print with regular lower cost Matter Hackers PLA, however, did not yield the same great looking results. After doing a number of other prints, it does seem like if you really wanna push the limits of this printer in terms of speed, it does appear that regular PLA might have issues giving the same high quality results that you can get with that hyper PLA. I'm sure many other materials other than PLA would have issues being printed at such a high speed. While the printer may advertise a maximum speed of 600 millimeters per second, you probably won't be printing that fast for every part and with every material. Next, I printed this all-in-one 3D printer test, which can be found on Thingiverse. I'll be sure to leave a link to it below in the description. While much of the lettering is too small to be printed correctly on this machine, everything else turned out looking nice with good dimensional accuracy. This was printed on the default high-quality setting within the included Creality slicing software. It prints the part at a shorter layer height and at a lower speed. From there, I printed some of my own models, including this 1 18th scale five level shelf and these 1 10th scale jack stands. The shelf was printed using the Hyper PLA filament as well as two of the jack stands. The shelf was printed using the high detail setting. I applied supports to only one side of the shelves to see how well it would bridge the gap on the other side. Using the supports was definitely the way to go on this part. And after a little cleanup, it looks great. Next, we'll have a closer look at the jack stands. To start, here are the two that I printed using the Hyper PLA filament. The one on the left was printed using the high detail setting, and the one on the right was printed using the normal setting, which prints the part at a faster speed and with a larger layer height. I'm still sticking with the default settings, and both came out looking very nice. The high quality model looking slightly better, but both pretty similar. Same thing with these jack stands, but I used the Matter Hackers PLA filament instead of the Hyper PLA. Other than the color difference and having a more matte finish, the overall quality is about the same. I'd maybe give a slight edge to the ones printed with the Hyper PLA. By the way, these models, along with many others that you'll be seeing throughout this video, are available on our Patreon page linked below. I wanted to keep with the scale garage theme, so next I printed a 1 18th scale two post lift. I thought this would be a good test as it consists of a mixture of both small parts and larger ones and requires certain parts to fit together. All the parts turned out looking great once again using default settings and generic PLA filament. I printed a few smaller 124 scale accessories and once again the quality looks great. There's a little bit of room for improvement in a few areas, but really if these aren't good enough for you, you probably need to step up to a resin 3D printer. Next, I printed some recently designed accessories for the FMS Chevy K10 pickup. I printed this bed cap piece at relatively high speeds. I think I bumped it up to about 500 millimeters per second, and the results turned out looking pretty good. 
This was not using the Hyper PLA filament, just so you're aware. There are a few little blemishes that could be nitpicked here and there, but overall a nice looking part. Same goes for this toolbox. Cranking up the speed just a bit, I also printed these little bleachers using the Hyper PLA at a maximum speed of 600 millimeters per second, and the print time was maybe like 30 minutes if I remember correctly. Again though, the part quality looks really good. Of course, this is a pretty basic, easy to print kit. However, there are a few little details such as these notches for the rear support to fit into, and as you can see, this thing went together without issues. It is pretty cool that I can print parts with very similar quality to my other FDM machines, but in a lot less time. Now for the grand finale, I wanted to use some ABS or another high temperature filament for a large print. However, it turned out that I didn't have any on hand like I thought I did. So this final part will once again be printed with Matter Hackers PLA filament. But this is the largest print I've done so far and took about seven hours. And it's this Frank Lloyd Wright inspired tissue box holder I found on Thingiverse. Once again, I'll link it below in the description. I specifically wanted to try out a larger and longer print. This part turned out looking pretty good, although as you can see, there are some missing layers in a couple spots. This could be caused by a few different things, being that I've read that some folks were having some issues with the K1 extruder with regards to under extrusion and clogging. I certainly hope that isn't the case here, as all I've done is maybe like 50 hours total of PLA printing, but I guess time will tell. At the time of making this video, I put on a roll of Hyper PLA filament and I've printed a number of objects and I've had no under extrusion issues so far. Fortunately, despite those minor flaws, this part is going to look great once given a nice coat of some textured paint and maybe even add a few details with an airbrush. So obviously, I've yet to really dive into this Creality K1 long term and venture beyond printing parts with mostly default settings using PLA filaments. But so far this machine certainly seems promising. I've been very impressed so far. Just about everything I've printed on it has come out looking flawless and in less time than my other machines. Setting up this printer and using the Windows compatible software was very easy. Certainly something that would be doable even for a beginner. This K1 is probably best suited for someone who's really going to be printing a lot of mid-size to relatively larger models within the confines of the build volume. For quite a number of projects that I showcase on this channel, I'll sometimes print really tiny parts using nozzles as small as 0.2 millimeters in size. Since I don't see any options for nozzles that are that small compatible with the K1, and because the parts are so tiny that the increased speed that this printer offers is kind of irrelevant, if you're mostly going to be printing tiny or very small parts like these, this might not be the best printer for those parts. I thought that was worth mentioning since I have showcased quite a few tiny 3D printed parts on this channel, but for the large majority of people who aren't printing tiny objects, this printer is going to do great printing a variety of models. At this stage, I can't really say how it does with other materials other than PLA and how it might stack up with similarly priced 3D printers from competitors, but I would encourage you to research more from others who have had the opportunity to print with a wider variety of materials and put it head to head with the competition. All I can say is I've personally been impressed with it so far and I'm looking forward to printing a lot more parts with this K1. If you're interested in learning more about this printer or would like to purchase one for yourself, I have included a few links below in the description for your convenience. But that's going to be all for today's video. As always, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you next time.